Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering how to create a quest system for your game. Now, this is actually a pretty complex uh, system. I spent several days working on this and figuring out the best way to do it. So, with that being said, we're going to spend a little bit of time here at the beginning. Uh, this part one is going to be solely just covering how the system works and how you use it and how it's going to behave when it's finished. And I think that's just a really important to thing to show you guys up front because as we go along and as we're coding it, it will really help you out if you know how the system works uh, beforehand. So if you if you really want to, you can technically skip part one because we're not going to be doing any coding, but I highly, highly recommend that you watch part one so that you can understand how the system works. Okay, so essentially the way it works is if you press the tab button, it's going to open up this quest menu here, and you can see I have three quests. I have a long way home, lighting a path, and exploring the city. And you can click on them and they'll kind of have drop downs and they'll give you like sub quests inside of those quests or like sub objectives you can think of, of things to do. Um, but for right now, let's just focus on this top quest. So if I hit this top quest, you can see it expands and it gives me an objective that says reach Megaton. So I can close it and then I come back here. So these are my three little city examples that I've set up. Um, and so my objective here is to reach a specific destination. And in this case, it's Megaton. So if I go to Megaton over here on the left and I open it back up and I click this little button, you can see reach Megaton is now highlighted in white, indicating that it, it has been complete. That specific objective has been complete. And you can see it's now given me another objective called reach, reach Anchorage. And this is still all part of that same quest. So if I come back out here, you can see I have Megaton, Anchorage, and Springville. Uh, if I were to go into Springville, for example, which is not the right one, and I look at this, you can see it still says Reach Anchorage. So if I go over here to Anchorage real quick, and I take another look, you can see Reach Anchorage is now highlighted in white, just like Megaton, because I have been there. And another notable thing is that Reach Springville is actually not highlighted white, and that's because um, inside of the system that I've written, I have a way to specify whether or not you want, or whether or not you require the sub-objectives of a quest to be executed in order or not. So currently for a long way home, um, this reach Megaton, reach Anchorage, and reach Springville, uh, it, it's specified inside of the, my system that these need to happen in order. You cannot do them out of order or it will not count. And there's it's a very simple way to change that to be not required, and I'll show you how to do that later. So then if I come over here and I go to the last city, you can see a long way home is now white because all of these sub-objectives are white. So that's a pretty simple example. Again, this is... Um, this is in this example the sub objectives are required to be in that order so you can see if i stop it and i run it again and i look at a long way home you'll see it doesn't even show you the other objectives because you have to do the first objective first so that's how that works but for other quests like lighting a path you can see if i expand this right off the bat there's four objectives and it's showing you all four objectives because it doesn't matter the order that you do them in so for this one, it says turn on light one. So I have some lights scattered around here. So if I go and turn on this light and I take a look, you can see that happened to be light three. So now light three is enabled. Now I turn on this one and I turn on this one. You can see I now have two, three, and four enabled and I just have to come over here and turn on this one. Oh, I didn't turn it on, there we go. And so once they're all on, you can see lighting a path is now highlighted in white indicating that's done and all of these sub objectives are done as well. And just to be clear, like uh, turning on the light and reading des reaching a destination are just the objectives that I've chosen to implement with my system. But my system is set up in such a way that you can add your own objectives. Like if you wanted to have an objective to, you know, like find an item or talk to somebody or kill something, you could very easily add that as an objective. And you just have to fill out a few things inside of the class to say this is how you complete it, and this is what it, the name of it is, and it will just, and then you just feed it to the system, and the system will uh, handle it correctly. And so the final one here is a little bit more complex. So this final objective, explore the city. So I have a little pseudo city that I set up over here. So if we take a look at it. You can see it says I have two objectives here, and since they're both showing, that means that I can complete them in any order that I want. And so I can expand both of them. So I have visit the green side, and these are the things it wants me to do on the green side, and visit the red side, and these are the things it wants me to do on the red side. Now, some of these sub-objectives can actually have sub-objectives to them as well, which you'll see. But if I have specified that I want them to be executed in order, then only the first 
um, objective in the list is going to be shown, just like this a long way home task. Um, even though there's technically three objectives in here, because there's three places you had to go at the beginning, only reach Megaton is shown because it is, um, it's the first objective and you have to do it first. So we can come along here and try to complete this one. So we can go to the green side first. So visit the green side. It wants us to visit the market, visit the post office, and turn on the post office light. So if I do all these things, I'll visit the market, I'll visit the post office, and I, if I take a look now, you can see visit market and visit post office are turned on, but turn on the post office light is not, so we have a little post office light here, because we're inside the post office. We turn that on, and we take a look. You can see visit the green side is now done. So I've done everything on the green side, and then I can come over here to the red side. And this one's a little unique, because if you see visit the red side, it just says visit the light store. So when you go and you visit the light store, you might think you're done, but the task is not done yet, because as soon as I visit the light store, I have more objectives, because there's things I need to do inside of the light store once I'm there. And again, this is the difference between requiring that things happen in order and things don't happen in order. So now I can see, okay, well, I have to also turn on all the lights. And if I click on this, it says turn on light zero and turn on light one. So it's like, okay, I have to turn on these lights. So I turned on the lights, and now you can see Explore City is white because everything in here is complete. And again, the, the whole turning on the light thing and reaching destinations are just examples that I used for the sake of this tutorial, and I'll be showing you how to set them up as examples, but you can add objectives um, until your heart is content. So I briefly just kind of want to show you guys how this works and like how easy this is to use once you have it set up. So you can see around the world I have these little objective icons, and they're actually uh, blueprints, or sorry, not objective, uh, quest icons. So these little scrolls you can see what I have up here. I have one right here, and this is for the lights, and I have one over here, and this is for that city quest. And of course, this one's for the uh, the quest where you have to go to all three of these places. So the way it works is that if you want to add a new quest, you just drag one into the world, or you just create a new one. So you can see down here I have this base quest, and then I have some child quests uh, derived from it. So quest one is this quest right here, and all you have to do once you have it set up is you just specify like the triggers that are associated with the locations you need to reach. So I have a little trigger box here, here, and here, and I'm just telling this guy, okay, these are my trigger boxes. And then inside of this quest, I set it up and I'll show you guys how to do that part once we get into the coding, but I just set it up to work with my system. It says, okay, you have to trigger these three boxes and then the quest is complete. And so whenever you wanna have a new quest, you just make a new quest object. And then for the objectives, it's very much the same way. Um, you have this base objective class, and then you have other objectives that you can create. So I've created a objective for reaching a destination and an objective for turning on the light. And if this is confusing, um, it will make more sense once we start actually coding it. I've actually gone ahead real quick and just drawn a quick little illustration of the classes and how they have them set up. So just this will just take a second. So I just have this base quest class. Um, and this is a base class, so you can't actually create an instance of it. But any quest in the game is just going to derive from this quest. So if you want to make a new quest for your game, you just make a child of the quest class. And then inside of there, you can add the logic to, you know, say when the quest is complete, what it's called, and all that good stuff. And then you can see this base quest has a, um, really the only thing that it has in it is the root objective. And what I mean by root objective is this guy right here. So each one of these is a root objective because it is the highest level objective in the quest. So the quest just has a reference to that root objective and then that root objective can potentially have sub objectives to it. Like this one has a bunch of sub objectives to it. But the top level quest only holds a reference to the root objective because that's really all it needs to know about. And then the objective holds references to their sub objectives. So if we come back over here to this other picture, um, we have this base objective class and we have this base objective collection. And this little star that I've added, it's also over here. This little star, all it means is that this is a class that is not like just used as an example. So this is like a fundamental class or blueprint for the system. But all these other ones down here are just things that you would add to your game. Like you'd add all these different quests, but they're not actually part of the system. They're just things that you create uh, to work with the system. And then over here is the same type of deal. So we have this base objective that all the objective types derive from. And then we also have this specialized objective collection. 
Um, and what this is, is as you can see here, it says contains a list of objectives. So all the objective collection is, it's a specialized type of objective that just contains sub-objectives. So an example of that would be over here, um, this visit green side and visit red side. These are both objective collections because you can see it's not, um, visiting the green side by itself is not an actual objective. The actual objective is broken down into all these sub-objectives. And actually each one of these uh, quests is just an objective collection as well because a long way home you can see just has sub-objectives inside of it. So that's all the objective collection is when we go and we start creating that. And then from there, if you wanna add objectives to your game, you just derive from the objective class and you write the logic inside of them in the appropriate spot, which again, I'll show you where to do that. But you can see for this tutorial, I have two little example objectives, one for reaching a destination and one for turning on a light, as you've seen. But like I said, you could make other objectives here if you wanted to you know, have it so objective where you had to talk to somebody or an objective where you had to kill something, literally anything you want to be as an objective, you would just make an objective for it, follow the patterns, and then you can add it to your game. All right, so with that being said, I think we are pretty much good to go. Hopefully that made sense. Again, if it doesn't, then it should start making more sense as we start to code it. So I'll see you guys in part two.